want to be an actor? I don't know. Do you remember when you were four or five years old and you went to a relative's house or a family friend's house and they asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Bade okay, kya banoge? I mean, of course, in our society, at the age of five, you're supposed to have your career goals in place, right? So now, while every other kid, when posed with this question, would, uh, you know, come up with answers like doctor, engineer, pilot, architect, you know, the coveted professions of our generation, I had my parents very worried. Because I would say, I want to grow up and become Charlie Chaplin. Okay? I didn't say actor, I probably didn't even know that he was an actor, you know? I would just say, I want to be Charlie Chaplin. Now, where did this come from? Every Sunday, there used to be a marathon run of back-to-back -back Charlie Chaplin films on Doordarshan, and I would only wake up for that. Like, he would make my weekend. So I, I just wanted to be that in somebody's life, right? Anyway, growing up, of course, I forgot about the whole Charlie Chaplin chapter in my life. My obsession with him got over. And I was an above average student, so I got put in the science stream. And um, uh, after 12th standard, I did not get into any of the medical, engineering, architect colleges, like most of my friends did. They were, of course, brighter than me. Uh, also, I think they probably knew what they were doing. I was, I just took up sciences because that was the thing to do. I wasn't thinking. I didn't have a plan. You know, this is what everybody does, so this is what I was doing. But now, I came at a very serious point in my life then, where I had to choose. Now, now nobody was pressurizing me to do sciences, right? Uh, I was left on my own. Um, I had to pick a course. I sat down for the first time in my life, and I asked myself, what is it that I want to do? What is it that I like doing, right? OK, what was it that I liked doing? I loved reading novels. So much so that in 12th standard, my mother had my dad cancel my membership to the Delhi Public Library because she thought I'm going to fail my 12th board exams on account of reading too many no novels, right? So yeah, so I was like, OK, I love reading novels. And lucky me, there was a course in Delhi University where it was, the curriculum was just reading 12 novels. Wow. I mean, that was a course designed for me, right? So I signed up for English honors. Three years went past, breezily. And now the time came to find employment, right? Again, I sat down. I was like, OK, now what are the choices for an English honors graduate? You know, what, what, where do you find employment? You can uh, work as a journalist, as a translator, um, nothing that really rocked my boat. So again, I asked myself, what is it that I like to do? What is it that I want to do? Now, I always had like really strange likings, you know. So I used to love writing jingles. Like when I would hear a jingle of a TV commercial, I would like rewrite the words, you know, and just for fun, like it was my kick. Or, you know, those clever headlines of ads, I would make them up. And I found out that there's actually a job. I mean, you could get paid for doing that. Wow. So I looked up. Uh, addresses of a bunch of advertising agencies. I didn't know anybody who worked in advertising, okay? Um, so I went, uh, went into an advertising agency, literally walked into an advertising agency, and told them, I want to work as a copywriter. So uh, for entry level, they have a thing called a copy test where they test your creative writing skills. I took the test, and I got hired. So far, so good, yeah. Now, while working as a copywriter, you know, after a while, I was just like, okay, you know what? I want to get involved in the whole process of making the ad film. I just don't want to be like the, just knowing how to write stuff. I mean, I know this, you know, I don't know I'm good at it. So one day, I walked into director Pradeep Sarkar's office. He used to make a lot of ad films back then. Now, of course, he's a big movie director. 
And I told him, I want to learn this. And so please hire me as an assistant. And what I can do for you is I can write ad scripts. You know, I'm a copywriter. So I got hired as a, a writer and as an assistant director. I, I love my job. It was just lovely being on set and seeing all these ads getting made. And one day, it was the 1st of January, and we were shooting for a music video. Now, not many people uh, like to work on the 1st of January. I mean, people have a life, you know? They party on the 31st and sleep on the 1st, but not us. So um, the actress for the part didn't show up. OK, and Pradeep Sarkar looked at me and he said, you are going to be in this video. Now, while I had acted, you know, in college and school, uh, college I did a lot of Shakespeare, I had never acted in front of a camera. And I was like, I don't know. But then I was like, OK, so he is such a big director. If he has faith in me, what's my problem, right? Let's give it a shot. And. Uh, you know, the video did really well, and I found myself in the world of acting. You know, one thing led to another, and I was a full-fledged actor. You know, my story so far is very easy breezy, right? But I'll tell you what's the secret to that. That I chose to do what I really liked doing. And so, everything was effortless. You know, things feel like an effort when you're not doing something you want to do. Then it feels like pressure. Then it feels like you're pushed. Right? Anyway. Now, the Indian film and television industry, I really don't like the word Bollywood, so that's how I'm going to address it. The Indian film and television industry works on a model pretty similar to any other corporate setup. You know, Entry level is fairly easy. You need to be young. You need to be talented. Uh, with a certain set of skills. And then, after a few years, if you've not had path-breaking success, you know, only the cream moves to the CEO, CEO, vice president positions, and the mid-level executives find themselves floundering, you know, in stagnant waters. And this is what happened to me. My first couple of shows on TV were moderate successes, then I did some movies which were critically acclaimed, but they really didn't send the cash registers ringing at the box office, you know, as they say. They were, they were not the 100 crore club movies. And soon, I found myself out of a job. You know, there were scripts that came to me I didn't want, and the ones I wanted didn't want me. You know, I, I was this mid-level executive who had failed to prove herself in the initial years. And I just didn't know how to crack it, you know? But, you know, I always believed that the difference between successful un and unsuccessful people is the lack of opportunities. You know, because somebody is successful because they got the right opportunities. It's not because they're more talented or they worked harder than you, no. Had you got the same opportunities, you would probably be there. But that's life, right? I mean, this is what happens everywhere. So now what do I do? How long can I sit at home and cry about, oh, I'm not getting the parts that I wanted, and you know, I'm out of a job? Again, I regrouped with myself, and I was like, OK, what is it that I want to do? What is it I really like doing? I loved acting, and I loved writing, and these are the only two, two things I knew how to do. But for the, both those things, I need to get employed by somebody, right? So we again go back into the same rut. So I was like, OK, let's write a part for me as an actress. Now, while I had worked as a copywriter, you know, screenwriting requires a different set of skills. So I decided to put myself through film school. And believe you me, that is the best thing I've done for myself. Well, it sounds, I mean, you know, I can say it like that now, and it sounds great. But I have to tell you that while I was driving to the airport, you know, um, to fly to New York to attend film school, I was howling. I was like a child on the first day of kindergarten. 
I was so nervous. I was like imagining, you know, being ragged and bullied and, you know, in a class of 18, 19 year olds and I'm going to be this auntie over there. I, it was like a flash forward nightmare, you know. And my husband, to pacify me, he worked out this log logic for me. He was like, see, if you don't take this flight now, you lose this money any which way, right? Your school fee is refundable up to the first week of college. So you go there, and if you don't like it, refund your fee, party in New York, and come back. It's like, wow, that sounds like a plan. And that's the plan I had when I left for New York. First day of school, I realized in a class of 12 people, there were at least five of us who were in their 30s or even in their 40s. You know, and suddenly I realized that, you know, only in our society here, we, we have this timeline, you know, that you have to have your degree by 23, you have to be married by 26, and by 30 you have to have kids. There really is no age for getting an education. You know, and, and throughout that, you know, my stay at film school, the, because we all came from diverse backgrounds or from diverse age groups between 18 and 45, you know, I just feel that all that diversity added so much to the films that we made, the scripts that we came up with. So that happened, and I came back to India, right? And now I was here with my armed, empowered with my new set of skills. And I was like, okay, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Now, you know, so many scripts that I had said no to earlier, it's because I did not agree with the values they were selling. I mean, it's not like, you know, they were not like uh, moral-driven films or anything, but I just feel subliminally. Like, I feel pop culture shapes our society. So, you know, like today if we find that Eve teasing is so rampant in our society, it's because over the last 40 years, we've seen a hero chase a heroine down the streets and eventually she falls in love with him and she marries him. So that's what Eve teasers think, kaise to hota hai? Sing songs around the girl, chase her all over the place and then she'll be yours. And, which, and like that for so many other issues, you know, like, Another, another thing I had a problem with was fairness screens. I mean, that is just like shocking. We are a country of brown people. And we have given the license to these fairness cream makers to come here and milk our prejudice and make billions out of it. So they didn't bring, they didn't bring the idea of fair is beautiful. Again, that was in our society. You know, the, all the songs where the hero sings gori gori, the heroine, the love of your life always has to be gory, you know? So, so these, are, these are very subliminal messages, you know, that pop culture induces and over the years, over decades, you know, that's, that's how society gets shaped. And, and I left so many scripts because, you know, there were these little, little things that I didn't agree with. So anyway, here I was with my new set of skills, and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm done complaining. I'm done giving this gyan to everybody that this script mein aise nahi hona aise. Okay, I'm going to make it myself. You know, if, if this is the kind of film I want to see, I'm going to write it myself. So I wrote the script for an anti-fairness cream um, short film. And now I wasn't, you know, still so sure of directing it myself, so I took it to various directors and producers. And, you know, I, I met with responses which I had very much expected. That, uh, nay, you know, these are not, this is not a problem in our country. You know, we have so many other problems, like, why don't you make a film on women empowerment? You know, that's like the catchphrase these days going everywhere. You know, things like, and I was like, and, you know, they'll be say, they'll say, but, you know, this is not a problem at all. And the more apathy I got, the more my resolve was strengthened to make this film. Okay, so I decided to write, direct, produce, edit, do everything myself and make this film. And I made it. And I uploaded this film on my Facebook page. In a week, I had 2.7 million hits. 
So an idea which I was told by some of the most successful directors producers in the industry that didn't have weight. There were 2.7 million people in the country who resonated with the idea. You know, it, it was not just likes, there were, there were comments and comments of people sharing their experiences and stuff that happened to them. It was like, you know, they all suddenly, they were like, oh, somebody heard our voice. Yeah, we, we feel like this too. So after the success of this short film, now I had another problem which I wanted to address, which was that the actresses in our films, why are they always only in the 20s? There are no parts for women between 30 and 50. You know, as if they don't have stories to tell, they don't have lives, which is completely wrong, which I refuse to buy. You know, like, like the heroine is always in her 20s. You know, otherwise then there are fringe characters which are just like supporting the main plot or, or you know, then there, then there is a the mother character. So I was like, you know, I, we, I need to change this because I'm done complaining that I'm not getting parts that I would like to do or, you know, that, that fit me. So let's write this, right? So I wrote this script along with this other writer, director, friend of mine. I wrote this uh, full length feature film script and Again, we started the process of taking it to a producer. Yeah, of course, you know, there, there is a protagonist who's in her 30s and it's a film about homosexuality, but yet you're not, you've not put sex in the film. There is no titillation, so, you know, everybody's like, yeah, but you know, these, are, again, this is not like, you need to write some mainstream stuff and all that. But I stuck to my resolve. I was like, this is a script and we just need to find somebody to put money in it. And we sent it to a bunch of producers, bunch of film funds all over the world. And then one day, we got an email that the Oscar-winning producer of No Man's Land loved the script and came on board as a producer. So you know what, in a nutshell, all I want to tell you guys is that never let anybody tell you that your idea is not good enough, right? Or, or you know, don't, don't get disheartened by your setbacks. Like I said before, that successful people have had opportunities that unsuccessful people haven't had. And instead of, you know, crying yourself to sleep, make that opportunity happen. Create that opportunity for yourself. Like I did. And, yeah, and I'm going to leave you with a quote from Shakespeare, which says, it is, not the, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Thank you very much.